From the time the first suicide bombs detonated at the Stade de France on the northern edge of the city, to the attacks on cafes and restaurants, and the bloody siege at the Bataclan Music Hall. The central question in Paris, in France, and throughout Europe has been, how did this happen again? How did Aboud manage to get into Syria, out of Syria, at least once? It's really a, a collective failure um, for Europe. Today, we cannot do systematic controls on our own citizens. And, and the problem today is that the, paradig the security paradigm has changed. Um, we, we were fearing an external threat, and today the threat is internal. It comes from our own citizens. When I met with you in January, we talked about the very large number of people who were under surveillance. And the number at that time, I think, was about 7,000 with some smaller number, perhaps 3,000, representing a more serious threat. Has there been any change, any increase in capacity since Charlie Hebdo, since January, to actively watch the people who pose the greatest risk to this country? Problem is it takes between eight to ten months to really uh, train someone to become an intelligence uh, officer, agent, uh, to be able for him to go on the ground. So the resources is coming, but uh, very slowly. And at the meantime, we've seen the threat growing. Um, the number of jihadists uh, going there has increased um, as never before. And the numbers are today uh, around 10 to 11,000. The support networks are um, very uh, important in, in Europe um, and the willingness, for sure, of these networks to target Europe, Europe has never been so, so high. And that means more threats. Tonight, France is under a state of emergency and cities in Italy and Sweden are on high alert. Sheila McVicker, Al Jazeera, Paris.